ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the final event of the 2012 racing season. The quest for the Marlboro Racing seat has already been decided as North Carolina's Landon Huffman locked that up last week with that exciting finish at Phoenix, winning in fine fashion. The champion has already been crowned. One thing left to do, and that's to run the final event of the 2012 season for the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series Championship and race chase number 10 here at Homestead Miami Speedway in the Citrus State of Florida. We're ready for tonight's running of the final race of the year, the Get Well Cowboy Championship 110. And Michael Keaton, it doesn't get any exciting than this, as tonight it's all about just good hard racing. Yeah, it really is, Wes, and, you know, a lot of these guys at the end of the season here, they're trying to get uh, the season of 2013 off to a good start, so let's finish this one good, finish this one strong, and have a good 2013 season. There's a lot, of, there's a lot on the mind of these guys tonight. Absolutely, no doubt about it, and, of course, we've already announced that Landon Huffman locked up the championship last Monday night at Phoenix when winning that event. Uh, he had a 60, a 59-point lead over the rest of the field coming into tonight's event. Uh, nobody can catch him whatsoever. Even if they try to, it's not going to happen. Landon Huffman is your champion for 2012 in the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series. And after 36 weeks, Mr. Bob Earl from Bob Earl Racing Seats will be giving him that uh, brand-new racing simulator seat valued at over $349. And Bob Earl is in our broadcast for the pre-race show tonight. Bob Earl, thank you for everything you do for John Abbott and the folks at RSR Full, uh, Real Sim Racing. It's my pleasure, guys. Glad to be here. Man, real quickly, but while we still have uh, the, the practice and qualifying going on before we get the race feature right away for the uh, Get Well Cowboy 110. And by the way, that race is in honor of J.D. Webb, um, our uh, producer, uh, executive producer from California. Uh, definitely under the weather. Had to, uh, had a something that was supposed to be in a minor one day outpatient surgery uh, or even just a, a uh, just a, a quick look over to, to prepare for his open heart surgery had something go wrong he had to stay at the hospital but we can let everybody know he's back home he's recuperating but our thoughts and prayers are with jd webb and uh to get back in in the uh, in the saddle cowboy as he always says but um bob earl real quickly talk about your bob earl racing seat and uh, what Lynn Huffman's going to be carrying home as the champion. Well, the new, as I call it, the virtual racing chassis, VRC Mark II, has a new seat which is padded and reclinable, and it's more like a Sparco seat or a Recaro seat in a, in a real car. A little softer, so you get some circulation when you're sitting still. Uh, and a much larger pedal plate to, to accommodate the newer pedals that are, are coming out by uh, uh, Fanatic and a lot of different manufacturers. Um, but it's, it's, the, it's the top of the line, our newest model, and I'm, I'm very proud to, have, to be able to present it to Landon. Absolutely. Michael uh, Keaton, you got anything you want to add to Bob Earl? Yeah, I just want to you know, thank Bob for uh, sponsoring this series all week long, all year long. And uh, for the 2013 as well, I know these guys have been, Bob, these guys have been fighting, fighting, fighting. And I can't tell you enough, R.J. Williams uh, putting on one heck of a show towards the end of this run and the chase. He was fighting, finishing top five, top three, top two. I mean, week after week after week, trying to chase down Landon Huffman for that points lead. He came up just a little bit short, Landon uh, so good behind that wheel, and I know that he'll be a fine fit behind that racing cockpit that you got there. So fine job. Thanks, Bob. Oh, no problem. I, I'm proud to, uh, to give it to him. Anybody that fights that hard for something and, and has competition like they did, it's a, it's a good moment. Why why, why uh, are, are you just so involved with what John Abbott and, uh, and J.D. and John uh, Westland and everybody at ETV has done with the entire RSR Full Throttle Cup Series and why we're bringing it back for next year and even adding on an additional race series with that? Well, obviously, I want to explicit to everybody, but I like helping the people in the community also because that's, I mean, this has been growing. I started 10 years ago, and this was just in the infancy. And it's gotten online now, and, and you guys broadcasting and all the different race series they have available. It's just amazing what this has become, and I, I, I just really want to be a part of the future of it. That's, that's one reason I stay involved. 
Absolutely. And now I'm going to turn things over to the microphone, the founder of RSR, which is Real Sim Racing, the Full Throttle Cup Series. Remember, you can go online to www.realsimracing.com to check out the official website. But, Mr. John Abbott, I know you've got some things you'd like to say to Bob Earl as well. Yeah, thank you, Wesley. Um, Bob, we, on behalf of um, Real Sim Racing in the Full Throttle Cup, series uh, I want to thank you for coming on board and presenting this nice trophy to um, to our champion Landon Huffman and um, it's been a fantastic season and and we've had I think over 80 drivers that have have entered the the series at one time or another um, to uh, compete for this great prize um, so again we want to thank you um, for offering this prize and your um, sponsorship of, of of our series oh no, that's great to do I, i'm glad to be a part of it and I, I i knew it was competitive but 80 cars i didn't know you had that many entries that's that's uh that's fantastic yeah um yeah so we've had uh, over the whole course of the season of course it's been a long season 36 races uh, we started in you know february um we basically paralleled the uh, re real life cup schedule um, so it's taken a lot of commitment on the drivers um, to show up week in and week out and put their best foot forward. Um, and the main drive uh, for most of the participants is that trophy. And again, we want to thank you for that. Uh, my pleasure. Hey, real quickly, John Abbott, before we have the champion presentation with our champion of 2012 for the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series, Landon Huffman, talk a little bit about the winner, uh, the winner series. It's going to be starting, believe it or not, next Monday night. Yeah, thank you, Wesley. Uh, and one small correction, uh, Keith Brooks, Jr., and Joey Chitino, and a lot of the guys here at RSR, they're actually the founders of RSR. It would be incorrect to say that I was the founder. I've, I do. My apologies. That's fine. I do have a lot to do with it day in and day out as well as they do. Um, You're the spokesperson. I don't ever hear them talk a lot. <laughs> well, they they're quite you know busy in our everyday. We all have everyday life going on, and uh, some some of us have more time than others. But but uh, but the winter series um, uh, kicks off next Monday. Um, it's going to be a ten race schedule um, using the um, nationwide Impala car uh, fixed setup. Uh, we will be off a couple of weeks during the holidays, but uh, it'll basically get us through the winter uh, and kind of bridge the gap between um, the 2012 full throttle season and, and then the next year's 2013. So that series is just about full, so look forward to some exciting racing uh, in that car. Absolutely, no doubt about it. And now at this time, uh, John Abbott, I'd like to turn things over to Mr. Bob Earl. Bob Earl to do the presentation of uh, announcing the champion, Landon Huffman, and getting this Bob Earl racing seat shipped to his house here in the next couple of days. Have we got Landon online? The info, I'm here. Yes, we do. Go okay, ahead. Landon. Well, Landon, this is Bob. I'm, I'm glad to hear you did a great job this year. It sounded like a fantastic season, especially to wrap it up with one race to go. And I'm just proud to present you with a new VRC Mark II. And we'll be shipping it off as soon as you can uh, get the information to the guys and, and, and get it to me, and then I'll, uh, I'll get it off to you. But congratulations. Thank you. This is, uh, this is awesome to represent RSR and uh, you and um, your VRC seat and uh, represent as the champion of this series. It's been a blast all year. Um, you probably noticed that I am sick at the moment. That's why yeah. I'm not racing this last race. But... Uh, Played with some kind of sinus infection or something, but you know it happens. But um, the series has been a blast. I've had a fun all year. The guys at RSR and ETV have done an awesome job of creating this and making it a premier series. You know, within the iRacing and service and and your cockpit just adds that uh that um awesome dimension. You know, to be racing for something so something so cool and you know to have a, a trophy like uh, your VRC seat to be presented at the end of the year. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Landon. I'm, I, I'm, once again, I'm proud to give it to you. I'm sorry you're not feeling too good, but it's happened to all of us at one time or another. we got to live through it. Yeah, for sure. Um, can't wait to get that seat uh, into my house and uh, check it out. And, um, you know, thanks to all the people that have been a part of it this year and um, all my sponsors, too. Now, if I remember correctly, Landon, did you say you've won a Bob Earl racing seat before? No, no, I have not. 
Okay, but you do you have some type of a simulator racing seat, but not the Barbaro seat, correct? Yes, uh, I am sponsored by Sim Seats, which is a another cockpit you know, within the iRacing service. But uh, looking at Bob's seat here, it looks like it's awesome and you know the highest quality. So I think I might have to set it right beside my my Sim seat here to have have uh, two The Landon's gonna put that uh, Sim seat on eBay. Cut <laughs> <laughs> that seat off. Yep, I can't wait to get Absolutely. this thing into my house. So. I got a question for you as we still continue our uh, champion pre-race show before we get to dropping the green flag on the uh, Get Well G Cowboy 110, the final race of the year here at Homestead Miami Speedway on the uh, ETV Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network. Again, we've got Bob Earl from Bob Earl Racing Seats in the booth as well as John Abbott and... Um, uh, yes, absolutely, and then, of course, also we have Michael Keaton, myself, Wesley Outland, and, and the champion for the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series uh, as well for 2012, Landon Huffman, and that Sim Seat 75 Chevrolet Impala. John Abbott, you got any things you want to say to the champion, sir? Thank you, Wesley. Uh, Landon, on behalf of RealSimRacing.com, Full Throttle Cup Series, uh, we're proud to present We congratulate you and present you as our champion of the full throttle inaugural season and we know you'll represent us well as you already have in the uh, uh, iRacing Pro Series um, but uh, congratulations from the league you'll be a fine champion. Thank you like I said it's an honor so um, hopefully I can do you justice in the Pro Series and get it into the DWC. I've had a few rough weeks to start out the season but uh, I've ran good, just haven't had the luck that I needed uh, to finish well. So hopefully we can turn that around tomorrow night at Homestead. And, of course, we're all a team here on the uh, the ETV Live All-Star uh, Race broadcast team. Michael Keaton, what is your final thoughts for Landon Huffman on winning the championship? Well, you know, all year long I've watched Landon uh, participate in the races week in, week out, and do a fine job. And just, you know, the competition of this league is so fierce and so tight that for Landon to pull this out, you know, was really fun to watch. And, and uh, you know, Landon, congratulations from from me. You know, I, I've talked to you about this uh, from time to time. You've put on some good races. You've put on some uh, uh, some good shows and good finishes. You've come back uh, from, from obstacles, from wrecking out. Uh, we thought that you were out of the race. You'd come back, pull through, and, and get a top ten or maybe even win like you did at Phoenix last week. So, uh, you know, congratulations for winning the championship here with RSR. Congratulations again on the pro status. I hope that you can get up into the DWC and qualify for that and represent Real Sim Racing and, uh, and Bob Earl and us here at ETV and the Sim Seats and all your sponsors. Congratulations on, uh, on all your accomplishments so far. Thank you. Absolutely, and always our all-star uh, ETV all-star pit reporters. Uh, any thoughts would y'all like to say beginning first with Dakota Earman? Well, winning the championship is a very difficult thing to do in any series, any car, no matter where you go. It's not always going to come easy. There's always things you can't control, things you, that you know just aren't in your hands or in your favor. Landon Huffman has overcome many of those things. I mean, he dominated, it seems like, the season. Uh, it just really outstanding job by Landon Huffman, and I—I I mean, it's really—it means something to become a champion the way he did. And uh, congratulations. Absolutely, and Joshua Harbinson, what's your thoughts on the champion Landon Huffman? I just gotta say congratulations. It was an awesome season. It was fun watching him race, and he's a racer. It's a—it's awesome to see what he can overcome and what he can do. Absolutely. And Bob Earl, any final closing remarks that you have to say for Landon before we get ready for the uh, Get Well J.D. Uh, Webb Cowboy 110 here tonight at Homestead, the championship race? Well, at this moment, I'd just like to congratulate him again and wish him well and hope he gets over the bug fast and get back in the car again. Absolutely. Landon, final closing thoughts, buddy, before we let you get some uh, Benadryl or uh, Pepto-Bismol and crawl back in the bed. Well, I got all kinds of meds in me right now, but uh, like I said, just... Thanks to RSR, ETV, Bob Earl for making this series so much fun. And just uh, thanks to um, Sim Seats and uh, Real Sim Racing for sponsoring me in the Pro Series. So, uh, like I said, hopefully we can do them some justice. But uh, um, hoping JD gets better and, uh, you know, just hope he makes full recovery. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Well, Landon Huffman, you are the champion of 2012 for the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series. 
That Barbaro Racing C Vade over at $349 is coming your way. Michael Keaton, give him a better description about what type of seat's being shipped to North Carolina to his house. Okay, hang on, Michael Keaton had to step away for just a moment, but of course, yes, it's that Bob Earl Racing Simulator. Bob Earl, I'll let you tell a little bit about people about it there real quickly. <laughs> okay. Well, the, the VRC Mark II is, is, uh, is made to work with just about every uh, wheel and pedal combination out there. It's fully adjustable to small kids, you know, about uh, six years old, anybody six foot six. And I, I try to make it adjustable for everybody and, and, and work for everybody and, and make it feel like they're in the real race car. Absolutely. Now for the full promo, here's Michael Keaton on it. Yeah, you know, this ATV, uh, uh, or excuse me, this Bob Earl racing seat, I'm going to tell you something, uh, uh, Wes. Uh, you know, from, from looking at all these other cockpit seats and, and, and all, the, the frame, the, the adjustability of this thing is what's amazing to me. You know, you can you can adjust the frame. It has the additional monitor stand, the shifter mount that you can buy this separately. Um, all this, the design by Championship Bob Earl, race car driver, who knows exactly what it's like to be behind the wheel, and he wants you to feel the exact same way from the comfort of your home. You can get one, BobEarlRacing.com right now. Put it on your Christmas list. Tell your wife you want a Bob Earl Racing cockpit seat. Put it on the list. Get one today. Absolutely. No doubt about it. We'll lie. Bob Earl, man, thank you so much for everything that you do with the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series, with uh, Real Sim Racing with John Abbott, Keith Brooks Jr., and everybody. And, uh, again, uh, congratulations again to Landon Huffman on locking in and winning the championship. And uh, we'll see who's going to win another Bob Earl Racing Seat in 2013 because I know you're back on board with us again. Yeah, I'm proud to be back on board for next year and keep working with you guys and looking forward to a good race tonight. Absolutely, and that's all tonight is about. The championship's already been decided. It's all said and done. Now we just go out here and have ourselves a good old-fashioned race at Homestead and decide who will win this, this uh, final race of the year. Bob, I appreciate everything you do, buddy. Uh, real quickly, send out your contact information or website if anybody is interested in purchasing uh, one at three hundred and forty-nine dollars. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, BobEarlRacing.com, uh, just my name.com, and uh, and I look on there, and it sounds good for Christmas for me because right now it's it's uh, we got to get people ready to, to get them there on time for for Santa. Absolutely, BobEarlRacing.com, and that's Bob Earl. Thank you so much, buddy. We appreciate you being on the program. And uh, thank you so much for all that you do for the Real Sim Racing and the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network. And we'll talk to you next year when we find out who's going to win another seat in uh, November. Okay, look forward to it. Absolutely, no doubt about it. That's Bob Earl. And, uh, again, a great thing uh, Michael Keaton, Bob Earl, has done. Uh, and Landon Huffman going to win that Bob Earl racing seat. And uh, uh, send our condolences uh, to, to uh, Landon Huffman. I hate he's feeling bad under the weather. He's sick. Uh, not able to run tonight. And uh, matter of fact, uh, R.J. Williams, the man second in the points, 59 back to uh, Gentlemen, to Landon start also, your uh, engine! Well, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we are already on the racetrack. They're set to go and race, and we apologize. I think they jumped the clock on us a little bit. We did have our championship ceremony, so we do apologize. But let's give you the rundown of the starting lineup really, really quickly. Rick Fouts on the pole, Chris Schallenberger second, Dwayne Vincent, Steve Ritter, Cal Drasback, C.J. LeVere, Nathan Little, Jonathan Goodell, Adam Roberts, and Steve Godstock is your top ten starters and uh, taking the rest of the way as I believe we are now coming for the green flag and we are underway here. Final race of the year at Homestead and I'll tell you what, uh, Michael, it's going to be a heated one and, and uh, you get folks like Huffman and Williams not here so we're going to have somebody different to win tonight. 
Yeah, and the two that I'm looking at is the teammates of Chris Schallenbarger, Dwayne Vincent. Uh, Dwayne Vincent put on a heck of a show last week with Huffman. He finished second. He led a lot of the laps last week at Phoenix, and Dwayne Vincent, I'm telling you, if he would have gotten into this real sim racing league at the very beginning, you're talking about somebody that's uh, competitive. Dwayne Vincent would be right there with Huffman, uh, Abbott, R.J. Williams, the guys that's up there, Keltraz back up in the top ten. Yeah, no doubt about it. The green flag is in the air as, uh, again, the Gidwell Cowboy 110. Championship race at home speed line speedway now comes to the line. This will be lap number three if they're working on the board. Start to complete. Bring out Schallenberger, Dwayne Vincent, Steve Ritter, and Kel Dressback are your top five. And guess what? Everybody single file, nobody jumping out of the line here at Homestead in the final race of the year. Already a car in trouble on the racetrack early on here at Homestead, Miami. Joshua Harbinson's down on pit road with information on what happened. Yeah, on that uh, green flag drop, White Wolf was turned into the corner, and he caught a little bit of the apron, spun his car, and he went into the outside wall, and he's slowing off the pace. He's coming down pit road now. We might have more in a little bit when it gets him. Wow, tough right there, but for the moment, Rick Bout sleeps the charge of Schallenberger and Vincent as they go down the back straightaway. Final race of the year. We apologize uh, not doing the opening ceremonies and all the great stuff we normally do, but we had to crown the champion tonight. Bob Earl from Bob Earl Racing was in the house as well as champion Landon Huffman wanted to get the championship ceremony out of the way because we do know Landon is sick. And uh, Michael, it's something that we would normally do until the race is in, but we wanted to go ahead and get it out with so he could get back in the bed. Leaders are back in the one. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Landon uh, definitely deserving. Um, and I'm sure he's probably watching this race and he's looking at some of the competition that he might have to deal with next year. And I'm looking at Dwayne Vincent, who's battling that teammate to the right side of him, a Schallenberger, for the second position as they try to hunt down Fouts and it's coming out of four. Yeah, and I understand why Wolf was the, win that spun off, the man that spun off of turn number two. Uh, and uh, Joshua Harvinson is down there right now amongst the activity on pit road. The 61 is parked. Uh, what are they doing to the uh, to the car? Is it going to come back out of the racetrack? Any uh, more is he done for it? Gosh, uh, the crew's down here trying to beat out some fenders and stop the tire rubs and all that. But they think they can get it back out on the track. Won't be competing for a position, but they're, they're going to try and finish this race. And as always, pit strategy. We love to get this information. The executive producer with uh, ETV or the associate producer with ETV. Uh, now our pit reporter of our ETV live radio all-star pit crew. Jeremy, what's your thoughts of how to get it done here at Homestead for the final race of the year? Right now, how you want to get it done? Exactly how Rick Fouts is doing. He's using the top side of the track tonight. That's going to be the very difficult part to do. The racetrack in itself is very hard to race. You can't really use the bottom. You really slick down there, especially in one and two. Throttle control is really important. This car seems to really want to slide up no matter what setup you're in. Uh, it's going to take a lot of skill to get through it tonight. And the access roads, you have to use them getting on and off of pit road. Those are also very difficult to uh, kind of master. So watch your pit. I believe pit road can play into this race as well with the track conditions themselves. No doubt about it, green flag back out again over the racetrack. We're still clean and green since the start. The Strutmasters.com, Chevrolet, a Jonathan Goodell under attack by Adam Roberts in the blue 88 for, set, uh, for the uh, number eight position on the back stretch in turn three. Yeah, and, and Jeff Addison's been underneath the 88 machine of, of Roberts there for quite some time. He just can't quite put the pass on him. It looks like that outside carries the momentum coming out of the turns. As you see Addison pull within to the uh, inside of the 88 machine going into one. May have the pass here, but those guys have been battling here for a couple of laps now. Yeah, the championship's already been decided. Landon Huffman, the champion. R.J. Williams second at 59 points. John Abbott in third at 99 points. Now, John might have a chance to overpass Williams maybe for second because R.J.'s not here. R.J. Williams also on the top of Guy Snyder the fourth and Chad Cole the fifth uh, top five in the points. Uh, Hayes, Horton, Roberts, Roth, and Lance around out the top ten. But like we said, it's just a glorified sparring session. The championship's already been decided, and Rick Bout is the man leading the way right now at Homestead Miami Speedway. But again, Roberts battles Fidel for eighth spot on the back stretch, and it's about to heat up with two more cars with Gotch Chalk and Addison on the back straightaway going for three. 
Yeah, Jeff Asson quite couldn't put the pass on Roberts there. He's he's having to back up and try to remount some sort of steam again coming out of four here. Looks like he's got closed with within a car length here. And uh, still the battle rages on for the seventh spot that, spot that Adam Roberts possesses. No doubt about it. Shawlin Barger sits in position number two. Don't count out Dwayne Vincent. Now Vincent now moves his way up to third spot. The pumpkin in the 13th. Winner at Charlotte, I believe he won. Took the checkers. No, it was Texas that he won it. Uh, won in that number 13 ride. He knows how to get it done around these uh, mile and a half race tracks. This track nestled just at a mile and a half as well. Different configuration in Atlanta, Charlotte, or Texas. But guys, he can get it done. Michael Keaton, they're down the back stretch, and we're still plenty green at the start of this. Get well, Cowboy 110. Yeah, and to mention, four out of the top six drivers right now on the racetrack, Kel Dresback, Steve Ritter, Chris Schaumberger, Dwayne Vincent, who runs second, they are all on red as chassis work. So these guys have got their setup dialed in here tonight. These guys are top six right now, and they've competed here with the, with the last ten chase races. They've been competing like I've never seen a team compete before. So look for this team to be really uh, uh, really going after it in 2013 as Dwayne Vincent looks for the lead in three on Fouts. Inside of him and try to make a run. Fouts' machine goes to the middle lane. Here comes Vincent down to the bottom. Vincent now going to try to make a close in at the stripe. He'll have to back off about a half a car length, maybe more. Fouts, Schallenberger, Vincent, the top three now as they go back down into turn number. Uh, well, Vince is going to try one more time. Excuse me. He's got by Schallenberger for third. As they come back down to the line, Vincent's going to try to look at the bottom. He'll try to reel him in. Schallenberger's in that mix as well. Don't count him out. He's ready to make a move for second in the lead. If it opportunity presents itself, as now the exit out of turn number four. Yeah, I really believe Dwayne Vincent has Faust's number for the past couple laps. He's been closing in just a little bit. Now he's within a car length, maybe a car length and a half. They go down into one, but Rick Faust, fastest on the board right now. He qualified first. He was quickest in warm-up, but let's see how that setup holds throughout the race. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Again, this is the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series presented by the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network. The leader in sim racing. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we will cover the action. What's going on on the racetrack for the moment? Fouts, Rick Fouts in the 78 car, looking for his first win of the year in the final race of the year at Homestead Miami Speedway. This is the Get Well Cowboy JD Web 110 on the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network. Got a report. One car has wrecked. Before we go to commercial, I understand the 12 car has got in the wall, Michael Keaton. Yeah, he sure did. He lost a little bit of uh, the handling of the car there. Hit the wall. No caution out, though. Able to keep it from coming up to the racetrack and hitting anybody else. Just going to take it through the pit stop here. A lot of cars, though. Nathan Little uh, having a little bit of electrical issues. And Jay Runda Watkins as well having some electrical issues. So four or five cars already out of the going here early on here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Absolutely. And uh, Dakota Ehrman, uh, Douglas Wyatt on pit road. What are they saying before we got a break? Four tires for that car, and I believe they're trying to pull out a fender rub right now. There's a really just a tire rub kind of on the fender. They're, they can't get it to quite pull out. Something's stuck in there, but uh, they believe people will be back out there in just a little bit. Absolutely. Douglas Wyatt on pit road in the wall. Before we go to commercial break, it looks like that number 12 car getting service in that Dodge will be back out to join the fray, but laps down. From Homestead Miami Speedway, this is the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network, the leader in sim broadcasting. We'll go side by side back for green flag racing in a moment.
Alright, welcome back again, ladies and gentlemen, to the Get Well J.D. Webb, or Get Well Cowboy 110 from the Homestead Miami Speedway. This is the leader in sim broadcasting the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network. I'm Wesley Outley. Joining me alongside is the Batman Michael Keaton. Our great ETV Radio All-Star Pit crew includes Dakota Earman and Joshua Harmonson, and of course John Wesley running the boards back in Indianapolis, Indiana as our uh, executive producer, J.D. Webb in California, under the weather, uh, and just come back from uh, having to have a procedure done at the hospital. Our thoughts and prayers are with J.D. Webb, the last race of the year, uh, in honor for him and uh, everything he's done for the ETV live programs as well as the Real Sim Racing. And I'll tell you what, we had all a bunch of chaos going on during the commercial break. Uh, just our luck, uh, Michael Keaton, but right now the pumpkin, Dwayne Vincent, looking to lock up a final race of the year to win. He won at Texas. Will he win here at Homestead? He's leading the way right now, but let's recap what happened. Yeah, we had a series of accidents, actually. Uh, John Abbott uh, being one that's in the top ten uh, in points, uh, although no real significance with that tonight. Um, also, R.C. Rigdon spun off hit the wall, no caution, uh, David Lanza tied up in an accident, uh, no ax or no caution, Jose Gonzalez spinning self solo off a of two, hitting the wall down below through the grass, spinning, no caution, so uh, a lot of uh, stuff, and then you mentioned the leader, you know, Dwayne Vincent taking over that leader from Rick Fouts, and meanwhile he's been uh, going backwards, he's back to third, Chris Schallenberger taking over that second spot from him. So a lot of stuff that happened during the break, but you didn't miss it with Side by Live. Yeah, Side by Live covers great thing that John Wesley does. And by the way, don't forget, tomorrow night, 9.30 Eastern, it is the NASCAR iRacing Pro Series. Join Tim Terry and Mike Connie in the booth, as well as Dakota Eastman on pit road for all the exciting action of the NASCAR iRacing Pro Series. Getting underway tomorrow night, 9.30 on the leader of sim broadcasting the etv live online auto sports entertainment network and yes they will be at homestead schallenberger in the number two spot rick Fouts is in third no change in position and i'll tell you what michael King, the pumpkin dwayne vincent winner of texas now trying to win homestead and looking up and checking out he's got about a half a second lead over the second place car of schallenberger as he exit off turn two yeah, what's impressive is this uh, this battle for eighth position that currently Adam Roberts, we mentioned him earlier, he holds Jeff Addison still trying to get behind him. Then you got Glenn Campbell who's called up. Steven Goschalk and Doug Roth is there. So uh, big battle there, shaking up into the top ten for the eighth position, if you will. They're trying to chase down, though, Jonathan Cadell, who's in seventh at Facebook.com, CHKD100 Chevrolet of Jonathan Cadell. So... Uh, they're trying to chase it down here, Wes. Hey, we remind you to tune in to End the Winner Is Motorsports Show, a broadcast of the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network every Monday night at 6 p.m. Eastern. Join me alongside Mike Neff for some of the great commentary. Ray, the World of Outlaws, Lucas Oil, and Fashion Pack, and much, much more. Short track promoters, dignitary sponsors, media. You name it, we have it on every Monday night at 6 to 8 Eastern and the Winter is Motorsports Show. And remember, if you love your open wheel talk, tune in to the Open Paddock with Sean Pinchin and friends as they talk about everything from the Mazda Road to Indy to the Izod Indy Car Series and much, much more. That is at 9.30 on the Open Paddock, a part of the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network. Get the mobile app on HD Radio Network, Tunes in Radio, iTunes Radio, the Windows Media Guide, and tune into the action when you're on the go. Dwayne Vincent over Schallenberger. There's your top two. The exit off turn two. Back here in 14th position, Terry Lane, a guy who we haven't called a lot uh, over the season here, holding on to that 14th position. But Joey Gatina with that roof and supply group Chevrolet, that red and white car looks really good, that All-American tight paint scheme there that you see he's he's been trying to close in the gap for that 14th spot here Wes but Nathan Bowers White Wolf Jr. also in the mix of things in that group as well yeah no doubt about it that beautiful number 14 car Joey Katina uh, similar to the colors of Tony Stewart 
down the back straight away, uh, or, or back to the front stretch, back to turn one, trying to make a move on Terry Lane. But he better look out because the 85, the white Chevrolet of Nathan Bowers is closing in on him. He'll try to make a run on Katina off of turn two. Yeah, and to Rich Jet, Rich Jet as well. He's he's been moving through the field ever so slightly. He started tonight's race 27th position. He's worked himself all the way up to 19th. He's working the number uh, 70 car, Brandon Webb, for 18th. He'll take it over out of four. Rich Jet up eight positions. Yeah, I don't know if people remember the four-star whiskey Chevrolet Impala colors, but that was what Aubrey James drove in the movie Stroker Ace with Burt Reynolds. Great racing movie. And it was the first star whiskey sponsor on that number 32 entry. As he's down the back straightaway right now, under attack by Brandon Webb and that number 70 car that heats up again as they exit off turn two. Absolutely, yeah, those guys have been going after it for a little bit. And ahead of them, uh, West, the 14, we mentioned him, Joey Catina. He's now working for that 14 spot now on Terry Lane. He's got the pass, he's down low. But one thing we, we got to keep in mind, Wes, these right fronts are probably starting to wear out here. And then we talk about fuel strategy. Could we see green flag pit stops here at Homestead? Green flag pit stops, Dakota Airman. Will it happen, sir? We're so far flag to flag, caution free. Problems, Nathan Bowers' car spins on the front stretch. They were getting that update for us. And Finally, will we see a caution flag? Nope. No yellow. We'll still keep it green, Michael Keaton. I can't believe it. He actually used the inside wall to his advantage to save himself from spinning. He got in the grass. He probably messed those tires up a little bit. Lost about six positions. But nonetheless, we stay green here, Wes, again. I cannot believe it. Joshua Harbinson, uh, uh, Dakota Ehrman down there trying to find the story. We'll throw it back to you, my friend. Uh, on pit road, Joshua Harbin said, are we looking at a possibility of seeing some green flag pit stop, sir? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, if they can't get a caution, it's definitely going to be a green flag stop. But uh, the cars can only go so long. Well, they got to come in. And I think Dakota was out trying to find out about when that's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, I might but be wrong about that. Absolutely. Dakota Ehrman, uh, back to you, buddy. What's the thoughts when they're talking about coming to pit road, sir? A lot of the crew chiefs are still uh, trying to estimate here as they have to see how much fuel the cars are, seem to be burning from the practice sessions uh, in the sessions. And so I'm still running back and forth down pit road trying to figure out what they're doing. But uh, we're looking for at least within the next 15 to 20 laps for sure. Uh, mostly right now, uh, as you guys said, this could go green flag pit stops. We're very sure that this track will be a lot of green flag racing tonight. Even with Rex, it's, it's almost a self-cleaning racetrack tonight, guys. Absolutely. Meanwhile, battle for 11th position. Steve Godschalk under attack by the 43 Metro Colors of the STP machine of Doug Roth. We got trouble. He makes contact. One car into the wall. That's going to be the number 10 of John Abbott. He gets into Steve Ritter. Roth just barely misses it in turn one, and the yellow flag flies. And they caution still, out. now they're going to put a caution out. Caution is out. Caution. There is no caution. I cannot believe that. The, the track was completely blocked, my, uh, Michael Keaton. I cannot believe that the yellow flag has not failed. Yeah, and that was about a three or four car uh, incident there. John Abbott, Glenn Campbell involved, Doug Roth too as well, and uh, and Steve Goschalk as well. I mean, these guys were spinning in turn one and turn two, but the, the flagman deems it not necessary for a caution. <laughs> Back, back down into turn number one, Vincent Schollenbarger, one and two. They are your leaders, and they're about to battle for that top spot down the back straightaway. Wow, Wes, you, you got to think here with cautions off, this thing is going to be green flag from start to finish. Have they verified that the cautions are off for this race? Yeah. Vincent Schallenbarger, one and two, Fouts is in third. And again, we've had four incidences that you'd think the caution would fall. The flagman felt done deemed necessary not to throw it. And now your leaders are about to close it on lap traffic. Glenn Campbell under attack to go lap down as they go to turn three. Yeah, keep in mind, these guys are teammates. Chris Schallenberger, who's second. Dwayne Vincent, who's your race leader. 
going underneath Glenn Campbell there that was just uh, involved in a huge accident in turn one. Uh, still green flag here though, but Chris Schallenberger right on the back door of teammate Dwayne Vincent as they go down one. Definitely, and nobody's jumping out of line just yet as they go back into the corner. The top two have now pulled away. Rick Fouts in way, way in the back, less than four seconds behind your top two as they go down the back stretch. They go to turn three. Now he's entering turn three, about a four-second lead that uh, Vincent Schallenbarger have got over Rick Fouts. Two one-thousandths of a second, the differential between Vincent and Schallenbarger as they come back to the line. we got pit stops going on. Glenn Campbell in the 44. One lap down, he'll come to pit road. And looks like we might get ready, Michael Keaton, for that series of green flag pit stops here at Homestead. Yeah, I'm thinking Glenn Campbell's coming down for the damage that he received, but Joseph Hayes, on the other hand, that number 69 machine, he's coming down pit road what seems to be uh, a scheduled pit stop here. So 69, Joseph Hayes at lap 44, down pit road here, Josh. Yeah, he actually gave a little bit of a scare on that access road. He got loose, got into the grass, but he managed to make it down to pit road. And he's going to take four tires and fuel. Well, the crew chief was saying he's in the box. The crew's going to go to work, and uh, we'll send it back up to you. By the way, don't forget, next Monday night is the Ice Breaker Winter Series. It kicks off with Michigan International Speedway, and I'm so glad to have in the Winter is Motorsports Show as a sponsor. Join us for live flag of flag coverage of the in the Winter is Motorsports Show 160 from Michigan International Speedway next Monday night at 9.30 on the ETV Live online and auto sport entertainment network. Thank you to John Abbott, Keith Brooks and company for sponsoring the, uh, the race with our radio show name. Let's go to Pit Road in Dakota Earman. Hey guys, I actually was talking to, just got uh, official confirmation from, I believe it was Nathan Bowers. Uh, he's got about 15 laps in the fuel tank, but he has been back up the corner, so we're expecting 10 to 15 more laps on the fuel. So that means about lap 50 or, fi or 55 or 60 is when they're going to be coming down pit red for green flag pit stops. And uh, by the way, I, I have official confirmation. They have, to they have told the flagman to take the night off as well as pace car driver gas. Oh, really? Yeah. Tell them to take the night off. We're going to finish this thing and flag the flag. <laughs> uh, you know what? Wes... The 35 machine, Chris Schallenberger, closing in once again on the back door to Wayne Vincent here for the race lead. Lap 48 complete, as Dakota mentioned. Pit stops coming soon. This is going to be a battle on pit road, I believe, tonight. This is how it's going to end. Dwayne Vincent right there in front of Chris Schallenberger coming out of two. Who's going to get down pit road the best? Who's going to be able to put those four tires on the fastest? And that will determine probably, maybe, a race winner here tonight. And you got to wonder, too, if Vincent comes to pit road, is Schallenberger going to follow the same movement, or is he going to get another couple laps under his belt and lead? Right now, I hate to say it, it's just these two guys, mano a mano, on the racetrack, as now they've opened it up to four and a half second lead over Rick Fouts, who's in third. And here we go. Teammates piling, coming out of two. Chris Schallenberger puts the left front nose underneath the 13, going down the back stretch. Chris Schallenberger to the lead here at the Homestead. So Schallenberger will go to the lead, and here comes Vincent with the crossover move. They'll try to make something happen for him. He'll come to the inside. Vincent, the pumpkin, nowhere to go. Schallenberger leads at Homestead on lap 50. We're five to halfway. They go back to turn one. Now, folks, keep in mind, this is teammates. You almost seen Dwayne Vincent pull the old good old crossover move on Schallenberger. There we see smoke just ahead of the race leaders there. Still, green flag racing here today at Homestead. No doubt about it. Joshua Harbinson, what are they talking about coming to pit road, buddy? Uh, they'll come probably about uh, seven to ten more laps, the ones that are saving fuel. But there's, uh, looks like two of them now on the access road. So as soon as they get close to here, we'll let you know. Schallenbarger leads them there off of turn number two. And lap cars in front of them. Yeah, and that's actually going to separate Dwayne Vincent, who's in second. David Lanza, that's, that's who you see in that red machine right there on the high side. They separate just for a little bit, and then the lime green Chevrolet that you see in front is R.C. Rigdon, who is involved in a self-spun 
accident earlier on in this race, but Chris Schallenberger, the man out front now, teammates one and two here at Homestead going into one. Absolutely, uh, Schallenberger out in front, Vincent sits in uh, second as Rigdon now gets passed by the leaders. David lands under the lap down car, and it's all a two-man shoe, two-man show, teammate show, that is of Chris Schallenberger in the 35, Dwayne Vincent the Pumpkin in the 13. And we're working lap number 53. This time by, it's been caution free. Flag to flag. No yellows have failed. Couple of spins by the flagman. No necessary not to wave the yellow. And Schallenberger leads him again off turn two as we're coming in on halfway. Now 15 drivers being shown right now on the race lead. 16 all the way back to 32, at least a lap down. But keep in mind, green flag pit stops underway here. Leaders yet to pit it. Uh, and Ed Williams Jr., though, being shown the last one on the lead lap in 15th spot now. No doubt about it. Schallenberger again under attack. Here comes Swain Benson, his teammate. He'll try to close in on it as they go to the inside. Now back to the outside off of turn two. Looking for the lead here at uh, Homestead Miami Speedway. Now, I, I got to imagine, Wes, that the, 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 the crew here on both sides, on the 13 machine side and the 35 crew, is telling these guys, guys, go easy here. If you're going to pit together, remember that it's not it's not a race, per se, but these guys got to be real careful. If they do pit together, these guys could bump, and that could be the end of it. And uh, as we see, Dwayne Vincent and the 35 machine, uh, both teammates here, one and two, within a car length from each other, coming out of two. And we just are coming up on halfway this time by. It'll be lap number 55, halfway through this event here in the Get Well Cowboy J.D. Webb Memorial 110 as they'll come to the line, or the tribute race, that is, across the stripe. Halfway flags are being shown by the flagman. We're halfway home. Let's give you your full field rundown. Schallenberger in the 35 leads. Dwayne Benson in the 13 is second. He's rallying, though, for that top spot. Steve Ritter is up to third now. He makes a pass on Adam Roberts. Uh, Jonathan Cadell is in, uh, Adam Roberts is fourth. Jonathan Cadell is in fifth. John Hanna Jr. is sixth. Kel Trasback, seventh. Eighth is uh, going to be C.J. LeVair. Ninth, Wyatt Wolf Jr. And tenth is, uh, well, now ninth is Nathan Bowers. Terry Lane is tenth. Cars are on pit road. Here comes the leader. He gives up the lead. He's second place. Schallenberger on pit road gives it back to Vincent. Hey guys, so Vincent stays in. out on the racetrack. Michael Keaton, Chris Schallenberger makes his own pit stop on his own. So much for teammate work. And here's uh, Dakota Ehrman to call the pit stop. Hey guys, Chris Schallenberger coming. No trouble coming down on the access road. Uh, coming down for four tires and fuel, he just wanted to get down pit road as soon as he could, get those fresh tires on, and he was a little unhappy with it at the end of the run, but he was still flying, guys. And now Dwayne Vincent's on pit road. Mike Keaton, he might have overshot coming to pit road when Schallenberger was. We talked about that. He might have overshot coming on to pit road. He was going to come on with Schallenberger, and then instead, Vincent decides to now come out on his own. Let's go to pit road. Joshua Harbinson cover Vincent's pit stop. Yeah, Dwayne Vincent, he's going to take four tires and fuel. And, yeah, they said that the uh, entry is uh, really treacherous. He might have overshot. And, uh, well, as you can see, it cost him a little bit. Well, I'm thinking, Wes, that uh, these guys probably wanted to, they didn't want to pit together uh, because there's only, it's only a one lane down there on the pit entry. You, you actually got to turn off before you get into three. There's the pit road uh, entry, and you've got to get slowed down and to have two cars try to get down there, slow down, and, and get, get to the pit stop. You'd almost uh, rather not want to do that. So those guys probably pitting offset to each other. You notice Chris Schallenberg came down first, and then... Dwayne Vincent came down second. And by the way, after they cycled through pit stops, Schallenberger and Vincent are one and two. What a turn of events, guys. Yeah, and about uh, 10 to 15 car length separation here. Call it about uh, a full second from the leader, Dwayne Vincent, having to make up a little bit of ground here, but he can do it. He uh, He's pretty quick. 
We're going to go to commercial break number two. It's a wild one here at Homestead Miami Speedway. It's flag to flag. No caution yet as we are now working lap number uh, 57 here of this great race at Homestead Miami Speedway. From the Homestead Miami Speedway, this is the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network. The leader in sim broadcasting, Chris Schallenberger, still leads. We go side by live. Welcome back to the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network, the leader in sim broadcasting, and this is the final race of the year in the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series Championship. But want to remind you that we jump right in to the hunt of things next Monday night for another great racing schedule. Join us for the inaugural debut starting next Monday night from Michigan International Speedway, the Icebreaker Winter Series. Michael Keaton, it should be exciting to cover that. Yeah, 10 races, man. It's going to be like a, another chase. And if it's anything like this one was, it's going to be fun and competitive, and you're going to have some heavy hitters in there, some new guys, some, some guys that's in this race here tonight. Can't wait to see all who's going to make the field and call it on Michigan. And by the way, the end of the winner is Motorsports Show 160 from Michigan will be next Monday night at 9.30 Eastern on the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network. Then from there, they go to Atlanta, Dover, Homestead, and a race I'm looking forward to seeing and calling Michael Keaton, Rockingham, The Rock. Yeah, Rockingham just now being implemented here in the iRacing service. I know these guys probably ain't got a lot of track practice time there, so it'll be fun to watch Rockingham uh, with these guys. And then from there, we go to Talladega, Charlotte, Indianapolis, Kentucky, all the way to Sin City, Las Vegas, to decide who's it going to be for that championship 
and of course the winter program the icebreaker winter series and of course it'll be a part of the rsr full throttle cup series go online to simracing.com for all of the information we're back to the action on the track here in the final race of the year at homestead schallenberger under attack by vincent Hunt. he's got to get my left cars to catch him michael yeah, it looks like this one might be decided between two teammates here tonight. Dwayne Vincent hunting down that number 35 machine of Chris Schallenberger, who just went past the stripe completing lap 70. Dwayne Vincent, on the other hand, a little faster than Schallenberger. He's tracking him down in two. Flag to flag, final race of the year. No caution on lap 70, 70 this time by. When they cross the flag stand, Schallenberger, Vincent, Bouts, Dressback, LeVair, Ritter, they're all five to ten seconds behind. The only man within hunting distance is Vincent, his teammate. Will he give him the punt in the pants up to the wall? Or will they race side by side? Brotherly love, like we would say here as they come to the line. Schallenberger and Vincent. Mono y mano. One and two here at Homestead. They're in turn two. And for the second consecutive lap, again, Dwayne Vincent just a tick faster than teammate Schallenberger. But could it be because White Wolf Jr., the car that's a lap down in, or about to go a lap down in 11th position, and he does a 35 machine underneath, puts the number 11th position car down a lap. Running down the field, Dakota Airman. Could we see them limo slap up to the top five? A strong possibility with the uh, with them being up to the 10th position right now and how fast they're going, but uh, the f third and fourth cars, I don't know, they're only five seconds out. It's not like it's going to take a, a, a lot of work, actually. It's going to take a lot of work to get up to them unless they somehow get collected as they are racing per position in third and fourth air right there with each other. And then uh, fifth and sixth being about 10 seconds behind the leaders. I have a feeling that you're going to see at least up to seventh position lap, guys. It could happen, especially with the flagman on strike. The yellow flag's not waved whatsoever. Schallenberger, new leader, Dwayne Vincent, the pumpkin. But here comes the crossover move in turn one. Yeah, I was just about to say. The wall, and that allowed Dwayne Vincent to get him, but it's not affecting Schallenberger. Not much. He'll still hold on to the lead. Now Vincent gets sideways going to turn three. Yeah, Chris Schallenberger got into the wall just a little bit, lost a lot of momentum in that 13 machine. Dwayne Vincent took every bit of advantage of it. Slingshot, if you will, right by the 35, and there he is down the stripe, leading the lap here at Homestead. Dwayne Vincent, winner at Texas, now trying to win the final race of the year at another mile and a half track, but a different configuration. Here at the Homestead Miami Speedway, the leader in sim broadcasting, ETV Network's final race of the year for the Bob Earl Racing seat. Landon Huffman's already got that. And the Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series Chase Race number 10 in the Get Well Cowboy 110. Flag the flag, working lap 75. Coming to the home stretch in the pumpkin, Dwayne Vincent leads them back to turn one. Trying to find the third position car. Here he is, Kel Dress back in third spot. We heard just moments ago him and Rick Fouts almost tangled up a little bit. They're starting to battle here and close in to one another. Rick Fouts, mind you, he started on the front row here tonight with a 31-203 at Homestead. Field comes back to the line. Pit stop strategy. What's going on? Joshua Harmonson, how damaged is the 35 of Schallenbarger? Uh, it's not too much damage going on with that car. They're uh, not reporting any tire res or anything like that, so they think they're still good to go. It's just a little scrape. Absolutely, and uh, uh, Dakota Earman, uh, I know you're down on pit road trying to find out strategy. Can Dwayne Vincent and company make it to the end of the brakes without having to pit again? They think they are very close on fuel. If anything, about four laps short. He might be saving just a little bit before it's over, though, guys. Wow. Shy. That'll be lap number 106 of 10 here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Set up Michael Keaton for a wild finish. As again, he's at the pumpkin now going by back marker cars. Another one bites the dust off turn two. I tell you what, West Dakota and Josh, if I can kill Dress back or Rick Fouts, I'm conserving because if the leaders here one and two pit. Uh, then, then the only shot you have at winning this race uh, with it being caution free so far is the fact that the one and two position cars have got to pit or wreck themselves out. So if I'm third, if I'm fourth, if I'm Rick Fouts or Kell, I'm waiting. 
to see what the leaders do. If they pit, I'm staying out. I'm going to chance it. Nothing to lose here. Absolutely. No doubt about it. And it looks like now Jeff Addison, Steve Ritter, R.C. Rigdon, all under attack by your leaders here in just a moment. As Chris uh, Schallenbarger still trying to hang tight between Vincent in a final race of the year at the Homestead Miami Speedway. What a great race. Yeah, great race so far, especially between these two teammates up here, Chris Schallenberger and Wayne Vincent again. We said their names uh, a dozen times, but, you know, it's the battle for the lead here. I mean, this is it. I mean, you got one and two, and there's there's only nine cars, Wes, on the lead lap. John Hanna, 22 seconds down from the leader. He's very close to going a lap down. Adam Roberts, same thing, 18, 19 seconds now. Uh, very close to putting uh, nearly 30 or 20 three drivers a lap down and Dakota Ehrman back down the pit road to you buddy I understand that there was a correction you were you were I, I know there's a lot of activity going on on pit road and you don't want to bother these uh, crew members but you're saying they're saying they can go four laps over the scheduled distance correct yes guys miscommunication uh, my part was crew chief but uh, yeah they're about four laps to the good just about uh, as you watched the Wayne Vincent was able to get it to lap 58 before he came down pit road Lap 58 was about the magic number because there is 110 laps, not 120. So uh, if that's just around, if you round that up to 60 plus 60, it's 120. So he is just about four laps to get guys. Well, look, if, if I'm Kel Dresbach's crew chief, I'm telling him, look, those teammates up there, Chris Schallenberger, Dwayne Vincent, they're going to run out of gas. You just hang on to that third spot, you're going to get the win. That's what I'm telling my, that's what I'm telling my driver right now if I'm Kel Dresbach's crew chief. No doubt about it. And, of course, you can hear the EKG in the background. The heart rate has got to be pulsating to the mood of, uh, of definitely uh, high adrenaline as the leaders are under attack by Kel Dresback trying to reel them in. And Dresback, believe it or not, is closing. Got to get by some lap cars, but he's got a shot to get Dwayne Vincent and Schallenberger for the finish of this thing. He's slowly but surely closing in on that interval, interval of five seconds, Michael. Yeah, and these guys so close on lap times uh, compared to last lap. This time by Dwayne Vincent, uh, just a tick faster, a 3-1-0 to Chris Schallenberger's 3-2-2. So just to give you some sort of idea how, how close that is, they're not virtually gaining anything. They're not, Chris Schallenberger not even gaining an inch. Dwayne Vincent not really pulling away an inch. So these guys really, really close with their lap times. This time by might be a little different story, but again, Chris Schallenberger got the draft, but Dwayne Vincent got the clean air. Absolutely. Vincent Schallenberger, Dredsback, Bouts, Ritter, your top five. Final commercial break, and we'll take you to the checkered flag in the final race of the year for the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network, the leader in sim broadcasting. This is the Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series. Get well, Cowboy 110. Vincent leads the pumpkin. Can he hold on the last 20 laps or so, 27 remaining, to win this event? From Homestead Miami Speedway, we'll be right back. But now we go side by side. to a comfortable lead coming out of two. He's got about eight car lengths, put it half a second over to Wayne Vincent as Chad Cole works the number two spot. Time is running now. Vincent's got it. Cole wants it to the wall. Chevrolet puts the bumper to the 13 of Vincent. Vincent not backing down. He's in second. You know, we got one car on the bottom.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Homestead Miami Speedway, the final race of the year. Yes, it's been flag to flag, but it's been exciting as well, Michael Keaton. Wesley Outland, Michael Keaton in the booth, and joining us always is our ETV Live Radio All-Star Pit crew of Dakota Earman and Joshua Harvinson. We're working lap number 87, coming down to the wire this thing. Vincent and Schallenberger have run each other down, and yes, Yes, for the lead, Schallenberger. He's got a chance to run down Vincent, but can Drez back make something happen in third? Time's running out. 23 to go. They're back in one. The lap before this one that was just put on the board, Chris Schallenberger about a hundredth of a second quicker. Dwayne Vincent this time by, though, quicker. So Dwayne Vincent pulls away just by a head, uh, a head of a cat here. So Chris Schallenberger, though, continuing, trying, everything, gripping, crawling. Um, clawing his way to the lead here. Lost your spot there for a minute? Yeah, they're doing everything they can but throw the kitchen sink at one another as it's coming down <laughs> to the wire. Now make it 22 to go. Make it less than 21 remaining. Lap 90 on the board. Vincent Schallenberger, they're one and two. And pretty much they have lapped everybody up to eighth, Dakota Earman. And uh, didn't I set the seventh guy? So so far, I'm saying pretty correct on my uh, on my guess there. I think because the uh, next guy's out, up quite a ways out there. I believe he's up to 16 seconds behind him. Exactly correct on that. Vincent and Schallenbarger, they're one and two. The final race of the year at Homestead. What a great way to work together. Uh, and you're exactly right. They're they're fighting their way for the lead. One lap. It's. Uh, Schallenberger, the next minute it's Vincent. But I'll tell you what, Michael, if Schallenberger wouldn't have gotten the wall, I wonder if he wouldn't have, uh, if he was still going to be able to keep Vincent from getting him because when he hit that wall, he lost that momentum he had. Yeah, if you take a look at the right front there, you can see that it's been up just a little bit. But is that little bit enough to maybe slow the downforce in, in the front stretch or in the, or the back the stretches, if you will? So he's got the momentum in the turns. I just don't think he can get that one or two miles per hour down the back straightaway, down the front straightaway that Wayne Vincent's getting. So that might that's where we see the differential there between the lap times. Other than that, these guys are right on the money. And again, there's only eight cars on the lead lap. John Hanna Jr. in eighth position, and they are quickly running him down as they go to turn one. Yeah, John Hanna Jr. just ahead of them. Uh, he's in eighth position, set to go a lap down here, probably within the next five to ten laps. And then you've got Jonathan Cadell, who's running seventh. Going up the list here, C.J. LeVere running sixth, Steve Ritter fifth. That's another teammate there of Chris Schallenberger and leader Dwayne Vincent. Rick Fouts, who started on the pole, he's running fourth. Kel Dresback, there's another teammate of the guys running up here. So, again, Red As, that's AZZ uh, chassis work doing a fine job here tonight. They really got their stuff put together here at Homestead for the final race. They got a battle for the fifth spot, finally. Battle in the middle of the pack for fifth position. Steve Ritter under attack. The number four nationwide Chevrolet of uh, C.J. LeVere looking to get that spot as they go back to turn one. Yep, C.J. LeVere trying to get into the top five there. I know he wants it. C.J. LeVere started sixth tonight. He's in sixth. He wants to improve at least by one, and he's got the man right in front of him to do it. Absolutely, no doubt about it. And, of course, Rick Fouts will pick up that battle for him. He's solo on his own, seven seconds behind the leader, maybe more, seven and a half seconds to Dwayne Vincent. Right now, I think it's coming down to Mono e Mono, teammate drivers, Vincent and Schallenberger, as we now work with less than 16 laps to go. Last time by, Chris Schallenberger, a little bit faster than Dwayne Vincent, moving him up probably half a car length. This time by, Dwayne Vincent, faster than teammate Chris Schallenberger, move him up half a car length. Down to the line, Joshua Harvinson, Vincent Schallenberger, your final race at Homestead, who you think's got the mustard? I want to say Vincent, but the way Schallenberger's running right now, it looks like he just might actually take it. Closed in big time. He tried everything he could to cut it. Who's it going to be? Vincent or Schallenberger? 
Ah, uh, I gotta go with Vincent. Schellenberger is driving everything he can. He's really got to one and two last time really well, but his car not handling very well, especially coming off the corners. I was listening to the radio a little bit. Uh, he is slipping and sliding just a little bit. I have a feeling Dwayne Vincent is going to be the guy to beat. Yes. Yeah, and I know the team re radio to Dakota, the crew chief on the uh, 35 of Schallenberger. They're telling him, don't overdrive the car. Don't overdrive the car. He's doing just that, trying to run down the 13th. Oh, you know he is, Wes. I mean, the 35 there, he's, he's got really nothing to lose as a teammate just ahead of him. He stayed with him pretty much the whole entire race. He's not going anywhere. He's going to be on the back door of Dwayne Vincent with two to go, with one to go. And, to, and Chris Schallenberger is going to pull the good old bump and run coming out of four. He's going to take the victory. That's my thought. All right. Well, I think Dwayne Vincent's got this place figured out. It seems like he's really got the handling on these mile and a half tracks, even though the configuration is nothing like Charlotte or Atlanta or, uh, or Texas, where he won back a couple of weeks ago. Uh, do not count out the 13 of the pumpkin, Dwayne Vincent. He's out in front. He's hungry for another victory. He's leading the way. The Silver Bullets, now the pumpkin. After Halloween weekend, he's leading the charge and about to put a lap down on the ETB Radio 65 of Ed Williams Jr. That'll make him two laps down as they go to turn three. Yeah, and talking with Dwayne Vincent last week, he, he, he felt like he was robbed last week at Phoenix. Uh, I tell you, Landon Huffman, the, the, the series champion here, came out of nowhere, involved in a couple of wrecks, uh, went all the way back to 20-something, come up through the field, and took over the spot from Dwayne Vincent and just robbed him. I mean, robbed him like uh, robbing candy from a blind person. I mean, you know, from a kid. So Dwayne Vincent is all but hungry for a redemption win here tonight. Absolutely. You know, we, we got Chris Schallenberger on the racetrack and their teammates, Dwayne Vincent's teammates, and him, vice versa. But this is the last race of the year. This sets it up for that winter series. And, uh, the, you know, where you're going to go from there and you obviously want to win and, and, and lead us up to that big program coming up next Monday at Michigan. But you want to win the final race at Homestead. These guys respect each other. They're not trying to wreck one another. I've not seen any cheap shot moves or anybody trying to put anyone in the wall. They're just going at it hard to decide who's got the best of the best. Ten laps to go. Leaders are out of turn number four. Yep, it'll be nine to go here at the line this time, uh, Wes. And again, it's Chris Schallenberger, as you mentioned, both teammates. But uh, Josh handed me a little piece of paper that says, look, there's no teammates with the last 10 laps to go, baby. And that's why I think Chris Schallenberger is going to pull the bump and run at a four on the last lap. He's going to sneak underneath the teammate there of Dwayne Vincent, going to steal another one and end the season on a high note. I'll tell you what, though, guys. One thing I'm noticing is that Schallenberger is quick on the straightaways, but Vincent's quicker on the exit of the corner. They can get each other, racing each other strong to the straightaway, but when they go back into them corners, Vincent's got Schallenberger beat. Schallenberger's got Vincent beat on the straightaway. What will pull and come out of that as here comes Doug Roth, the SDP 43 car. A bad season he's had in the championship this year. He'll now go a lap down, and he'll now be made uh, nine laps down in this race. As Vincent and Schallenberger, it's these two guys for the final race of the year. Wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, that kind of hurt Schallenberger there, Doug Roth being up on the high side. I know he's getting out of the way, not really trying to, uh, to, to, to get in anybody's way there. But Schallenberger couldn't come off that corner like he wanted to and swing it up real high. So slowed him down just a little bit. But nonetheless, the draft still works here at Homestead. You're seeing it working right now. He's down the back stretch. He's about a half a car length. I'm telling you, he's getting that nose ready. Yeah, and Doug Roth got into the wall while they were trying to pass him. Uh, big, big scare there for the 43 colors. He's already nine laps down. A lost cause in this event. But uh, another caution that should have came out that didn't. The flagman's on strike. Doesn't see any reason to throw the yellow flag. I think he's ready for this season to be over, Michael Keaton. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, and I tell you, I tell you, who's ready for it to, to be over? That's that's these that's uh, Dwayne Vincent. I mean, not in a bad way, but he's just so anxious to get to that 2013 season because he really wishes that he would have started the 2012 series with Real Sim Racing and his Fourth Auto Cop series. So, uh, but but he wasn't able to. And the Cup series. <laughs>
It's a mouthful. I wish I, I wish we'd abbreviate it. R S R F T C S. How about that? That's still too much to, to swallow. Oh no! For the lead! Schallenberger trying to get on Vincent, but he's losing ground in turn three. I believe he hit the wall. I think Chris Schallenberger smacked the wall and he got loose. Wes. Got loose and hit the wall. Chris Schallenberger. He didn't get in the wall, but he got loose. I don't think he hit the wall, but he got loose. Definitely got loose. Car might be tightening up on him. Dakota Ehrman, what's your thoughts, buddy? Flo, let's then uh Three to go. Is he getting a tight race car? Yeah, right now he's really <laughs> overdriving it. I I'll tell you guys what, is he dies in the corner here. I'm telling you, he's been trying to do this the last few laps. He's really burning up the right front, not helping him, and he's just way overdriving off the corner. Too much throttle. I told you guys earlier, this track's big on throttle control, and he is not having much of that right now, trying to catch that leader. Absolutely, and we mentioned it just about 20 laps ago. I, I told you the crew members were telling him, don't overdrive the car. Do not overdrive the car. You can see on the, um, well, look on the ETV uh, driver cockpit of the 35 of uh, Schallenbarger. You can see him really turning the steering wheel hard, going into the corner, trying to get that line, that preferred line that Dwayne Vincent's running right now. But they're about to come to the line with two laps to go, and the race of the season is up for grabs right after this race end of the winter schedule, but this is the last race to RSR, and Michael Keaton, Vincent's got it. Schallenberger better get on the gas and try to make something happen with a lap and a half remaining. Yeah, the Wayne Vincent turning a 32-4 there at the line. Chris Schallenberger turning a 32-6. I'm sticking with it, guys. I'm sticking with my story. I think he hit the wall. He got that right rear so sideways that he actually nicked it, and I think that really hurt him. He's got that right rear probably rubbing against the right rear fender, slowing him down. Here he is at the line again, a lot slower than Vincent. White flag in the air. One more lap to go in the 2012 season for the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series Championship. Final race of the night. Two cars, mono e mono. Vincent leads down the back stretch. Here we go. This is it. Can Schallenberger have any sort of a miracle? Dwayne Vincent might have to spin it to get him. I don't think he's going to get him, though, as a round three and four. Not going to get it, Michael Keaton, out of turn number four. Landon Huffman's the champion. He wins the war, but the battle for tonight at Homestead goes to Dwayne Vincent. Dwayne Vincent wins. Second spot to Schallenberger, his teammate. Dressback goes three. Fourth to Rick Fouts and fifth to Steve Ritter. LeVar, Cadell, Hannah, Jr., Wolf, Jr., and Nathan Bowers wound out the top ten. And eight cars remained on the lead lap when this race was said and done. How about that? Teammates, one, two, three, and then call it for Steve Ritter who actually finished sixth, but uh, good run there for the teammates finishing one, two, three. Dwayne Vincent, Chris Schallenberger, Kale Dress back. And there you see Schallenberger bumping the side of the 13 to Dwayne Vincent, giving him a little love tap saying congratulations. So does the 45 of Kel Dresback. Good sportsmanship. They weren't trying to wreck one another. And now burnout time at Victory Lane. Yes, you're exactly right, Doc. Dakota Ehrman, sometimes this last race of the year, the winner of this race is overshadowed by the championship of Landon Huffman. Landon Huffman is the champion, but Dwayne Vincent wins this great race here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Flag to flag tonight, guys. And I tell you, Dwayne Vincent deserving every bit of it again. He was robbed last week at Phoenix, he said. This week, he shows up, puts it on the board for first place, running or leading 72 laps. So congratulations, Dwayne Vincent. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have our post-race show, the final post-race show for the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series as the season is now officially in the books. Dwayne Vincent, the pumpkin, wins the final race of the year at Homestead Miami Speedway. We'll be right back on the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network with our top three finishers, and this is the leader in sim broadcasting. Homestead in the books, RSR championship season done. Huffman wins the war, but Vincent wins the battle here in the last race of the year at Homestead Miami Speedway. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Homestead Miami Speedway. The post-race show for the final race of the season is underway. And, of course, an exciting event in the books. Landon Huffman, the champion for the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series Championship. He won the Bob Earl Racing seat. But now it's time for our final post-race show for 2012. And now we're going to throw it to Joshua Harbinson, who's with our third-place finisher, Kel Dressback. The ups and here with Kel Dresback started fifth, finished third. He ran a great race. Kel, tell us about it. Oh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, wish we'd have got a caution there. I'd like to see what I, if I had anything for Dwayne or Chris. I don't, I don't really think I did. But it uh, would have been fun <laughs> to know. Um, it was a good race, though. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Skunk Works, Ohio Made White Whiskey, Raceskin.coms, and uh, Bob Earl. You guys, DTV, you guys do a great job. Uh, it's getting fun to get to talk to you guys, boy. Uh, well, we appreciate it, too. Is there a... That... You, I guess you already thanked the sponsors, haven't you? Is there anybody else you'd like to thank? Yeah, I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, Team Red Ass. Uh, looks like we got uh, finished the uh, top four positions, four out of the top five also, so uh, it was a great run. I thank everyone. Uh, helped me a lot. Uh, a lot of fun. Thanks, guys. All right, well, that was Kel Dresbeck. I'm going to send it on over to uh, Michael Keaton, who is with our second-place finisher, Chris Schellenberger. There you go. Another teammate finishing in the top three here tonight, Chris Schellenberger. You started on the outside pole of Fouts there, got off to a, a, a good uh, start there, led 21 laps, but the battle was for first between teammate Dwayne Vincent all race long, you two switching back and forth. Then the wall came. Coming out of two, the car got a little bit sideways on you. Take us through that. And uh, was it enough to slow you down? Because we started noticing that your time started to go down a little bit. So, Chris, uh, talk to us about your event tonight. That was a blast, a fun race. Racing Dwayne is always a good time. He is so good. He never makes any mistakes. So I was going to have to earn that one and uh, came up a little short. I was chasing him down there in the first half. I'm usually pretty good on the long runs. I kind of knew that. So I was kind of biding my time and uh, passed him right before the pits. I think I had a really good uh, entry and exit on pit stops. Came out uh, ahead of him by about a second and a half or so. And uh, he's always quicker than me on the short run, so he kind of caught back up. And I struggled with that lap traffic. And uh, I just had one little one little lapse there and hit the wall. And I'm going to use that as my excuse other than just running out of talent. So I'll say the car was hurt, but it didn't feel that different. Um, it might have had a little damage, but it, once he got by me, I just, uh, I could get to him. It was just, it's really hard to get by somebody that's that, that smooth. It's, he just, I had to wait for him to make a mistake and he just didn't make any. Absolutely. And Chris, you know, ending on this high note here, the second spot here tonight at Homestead, we leave here. And, uh, if you run the 2013 series, which I hope you guys, you all you guys do, but, uh, how, how does that set you up for the 2013 series? Uh, finishing second here tonight, your teammate, uh, winning the race, another teammate finishing third, and then Steve Ritter, of course, uh, cracking out the top six there So in the sixth spot. So how does that make you feel going into a, a fresh start for the 2013 ser series? I can One time I can probably speak for everybody and say we're, we're really excited for next season. I know a lot of us didn't get into this season in the beginning, so we missed a lot of early races. And I know personally I'm really looking forward to a full season next year. I hope my work schedule allows me to make all the races. I know I know the rest of the guys are pretty pumped about it, and we're starting to figure these things out a little bit. And uh, it's just a pleasure to run with a great group of guys. Everybody on uh, Red Ass is, uh, you know, just it's a pleasure to ride and run with them, and they're a lot of fun, and I just have a really good time with it. Absolutely, Chris, and uh, appreciate you for uh, racing uh Racing hard there towards the end, not giving up, even though it was against a teammate. I told him, I said, look, this is what Schallenberger's going to do on the last lap. He's going to give him the old bump and run, go underneath. Vincent, still another one, because I know Dwayne got one stole from him last week. And speaking of Dwayne Vincent, your announcer, Wesley Allen, sitting right beside him in Gatorade Victory Lane. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, he, he was in this same predicament back at uh, Texas Motor Speedway a couple of weeks ago at the Great American Speedway and here on this beautiful, uh, beautiful Homestead Miami Speedway, Florida night. He turns around and wins the final race of the year for the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series. And by the way, uh, this has also just been brought to my attention 
uh, Team Stroker Ace is your overall point side team champion for the season. So Team Stroker Ace wins the championship. Landon Huffman wins the overall points championship. And in the final race of the year here at Homestead Miami Speedway on championship weekend, it is, of course, Dwayne Vincent winning the pumpkin in the 13. Congratulations, part of Team Red Ash. You did it again, buddy. Finally got us one, man. It's about time. Well, you won it. You won it, Texas. No, I <laughs> no, I didn't. You didn't win it. Who won it, Texas? Steve Ritter. He got me on the last lap. Oh, okay. I, uh, Robbed <laughs> again. Robbed again. Then I guess. Yeah, I, man. Yeah. It's been a long season, hasn't it, Dwayne? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, and, and Chris pretty much summed everything up for me, man. It's, it's been a blast running in this, man. I, I appreciate them guys letting me in. I wish I could have started at the beginning of the season. It, it's been a lot of, lot of fun. Awesome. Great race, man. Talk about just you and, and uh, Team Red Ass, you and Charlotte Barger, pretty much just dominating this event one and two the entire night. No, no, nobody could even contend with you guys. Well, man, he, he was, I, I can get him on a short run, like you said, man, and he just, he had that line, man, where he was better tire wear than I was, man, but uh, at the end, I, I just, I it just found it, I guess, man, and it, and it worked, thank God, but he, he was, he, he was tough to beat, I'm, I'm sweating, man. Uh, this has got to be a great way to end the season and set things up for this winter schedule coming up next week. Yes, it is, I, I'm looking forward to it, man. But uh, I just want to thank everybody on uh, RSR, uh, you guys at ETV, uh, all my teammates, Red Ass, and uh, Bob Earl for sponsoring this stuff. We appreciate that. Uh, Mom and Dad for watching. And last but not least, my girlfriend, Tess. Man, I hope she enjoyed it. Absolutely, buddy. No doubt about it. And, uh, you know, Dakota Emerson said that it's, it seems like whenever you, you have the final race of the year, the championship, the champion uh, overshadows the winner of the event. And, and uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I really don't I, – I totally disagree with that. Uh, I'm so glad you finally were able to get you one. Thank you, man. It's been a long time trying, man. Team Red Ass, one, two, and three. And no, I'm not saying something derogatory. That's the name of the race team. They finished one, two, and three to close out a great season here at Homestead Miami Speedway in the in the uh, Kidwell uh, Cowboy 110 here at the uh, at the final race of the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series Championship. Michael Keaton, your final thoughts before we sign off, buddy. Yeah, I can't wait to get the Winter Series underway. I know that'll be a real fun 10-week uh, event that these guys are really going to try to go after and be competitive. I think that's going to be real fun to watch. And, uh, and again, you know, the 2013 Series, I can't wait to see some of these hard hitters uh, have a chance to compete full out. Uh, I mentioned during the broadcast last week, this week, Dwayne and some of these other guys who got into this thing in a late start, and uh, they're really showing some competitiveness here at the end of the series, and, and uh, I can't wait to see the 2013 unfold uh, and see how everyone ends up in the next chase. No doubt about it, uh Dakota Ehrman's already had to step away. I know he's had a great time covering this RSR Full Throttle Cup Series. Also joining us at the beginning of the chase, Joshua Harbinson. Joshua, thank you so much for all your hard work, your dedication, and uh, being with us every Monday night covering the action on pit road. And what's your final thoughts of the overall season? Uh, I enjoyed every race of it. It was exciting, and uh, it, it was just great fun for me. I enjoyed it. Absolutely. And, of course, uh, our thoughts and prayers are still again with uh, J.D. Webb, who is recuperating, who is recovering. I uh, just want to kind of go a little bit into detail of what happened. Uh, he had to have a procedure done, uh, an anagram done on his heart to look inside before the open heart surgery that he's already scheduled to be having. When they pulled the catheter out of the uh, femoral artery in his groin area Friday, it bled out causing an aneurysm and large hematoma. In, the, uh, in his groin area, and in that process, uh, he can't walk, and he will be going to be in bed in the next couple of weeks. He did recover from that. They had to do an operation, and they were able to get that uh, successfully complete, And uh, but he's going to be out for the next couple of weeks recuperating. Um, well, you know, it was supposed to have been a one-day procedure turned into a nightmare, but we are so glad, Michael Keaton, that uh, J.D. Webb is okay. He's a tough old cowboy. He ain't going nowhere. It's going to take a little bit of time off to recuperate during the Thanksgiving holiday, and we should see him back here in the next month. 
Yeah, absolutely. JD is going to recover. He's going to be all right, and he's going to uh, be back 2013 full out. I guarantee you, JD is a uh, strong competitor, uh, whether on the broadcast or off. Absolutely, no doubt about it. So we sign off from here. Wow. Dwayne Vince at the Pumpkin wins at Homestead Miami Speedway. Team Stroker, uh, Stroker Ace is your overall points uh, team's champion. And Landon Huffman wins that Bob Earl racing seat. And a big thanks to Bob Earl for being on the program. Big thanks to Keith Brooks Jr., John Abbott, and all the folks at RSR. Go to RealSimRacing.com for more information. And from that, we will now move on to the big winner series. Michael Keaton, tell them about it before we get off the air. Yep, the Winter Series kicking off 10 races. It's going to be like another chase, if you will, Monday night, uh, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss it. going to be fun, and uh, we'll see who's got the goods and who doesn't. What could shake up to be a great 2013 series? Who's going to take the crown home for the Winter uh, Icebreaker Series? Can't wait to get it uh, fired up. That is, of course, the Ice Breaker Winter Series starting next Monday night for the And the Winner is Motorsports Show 80 from Michigan Speedway next Monday night. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the race from Homestead Miami Speedway. As I said in closing, as he come to the checkered flag, Landon Huffman wins the war, but... Vin, uh, Dwayne Vincent wins the battle. The Pumpkin wins the final race at Homestead Miami Speedway. And this has been the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network. Big thanks to John Wesling, our uh, producer, the man running the boards, always doing a great job. We appreciate what he does. And, again, we will tune in next Monday night. Have you guys tune in again as we'll find out who's going to win race one of the Ice Breaker Winter Series. And come February, we'll decide who's going to win another Bob Earl Racing Seat, as you heard during the pre-race show tonight. He'll be giving away another one in 2013. Great job, as always, by our uh, producers, uh, associate producer, J.D. Webb, Dakota Irvin, and the man running the boards, John Wesley, to our all-star pit crew as well, Dakota Irvin and John, Joshua Harbinson. And always, Michael Keaton, a pleasure working with you in the booth. We'll do it again next Monday night. Absolutely. Can't wait. Michigan going to be fun. Thank you. Definitely, definitely. And then in closing, we thank you all so much for tuning in tonight to the ETV Live Online Auto Sports Entertainment Network from Miami Speedway, the leader in sim broadcasting. I'm Wesley Outland. Thank you for tuning in. Landon Huffman, the champion. Dwayne Vincent wins the final race of the year. And get well, J.D. Webb. Good night. Until we meet again, God bless you. And happy Thanksgiving. Oh, <laughs> my